Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I am Uday Bhaskar. This week, we recall India's first Paramveer Chakra winner, Major Somnath Sharma of the Kumau Regiment, who, to put it in two words, saved Kashmir for India in November 1947. It would not be an exaggeration to suggest that but for Major Somnath Sharma and the other Fauji's, independent India may have lost Kashmir to the invader in November 1947. While paying tribute to Major Sharma and the gallantry of the Indian soldier, we also reflect on another paradox. Why is the soldier or the Fauji treated with this degree of occasional adulation, general indifference and institutional disdain in India. As is often pointed out, Indian children learn little about their soldiers in school. Society venerates a range of celebrities, but the spectrum does not include the soldier. And the paradox is multi-layered. To discuss these issues, we have, as always, an eminent panel. Lieutenant General Satyavir Yadav, a Kumani, from the same battalion as the late Major Somnath Sharma. Major General Ian Tardozo, a war veteran of 1971. He has labored single-handed to bring the Paramvir Chakra story to the wider Indian population. And Mr. Santosh Desai, a noted columnist and author. Let me turn to you first, General Yadav. As a Kumani, for Kumaon, as I said, perhaps you could help us to understand what was the operation itself on November 3rd, 1947 in Srinagar? Well, uh, without uh, dwelling on the background that uh, under the accession of, with the accession of Jammu and Kashmir to the Union, which was delayed, the Pakistan could not digest the succession of Jammu and Kashmir and therefore it unleashed a horde of marauders or you can Raza cars into the valley who entered into the valley towards the end of October. The situation was they had overrun Baramula, plundered, raped the locals and were menacingly threatening the Srinagar airfield which happened to be the only link with the mainland or hinterland. It may be pertinent to mention that the only the road link the road was only up till Pathan Court. There onwards it was not tarmac and a very difficult road taking about three to four days to reach Srinagar. Therefore, the only link was the Srinagar airfield. So, but the Indian the, troops had to be brought by air. There was no Sh choice to save the day. The Indian troops had to be brought in by air. On 27th of October, first Sikh from 161 Infantry Brigade commanded by Brigadier L.P. Sen was air landed. There afterwards, on 29th, first para Kumaon was landed and on 31st, one company of four Kumaon, that is Delta Company under late Major Somna Sharma Paramir Chakra was landed. Four Kumaon that time was deployed in internal security duties for the security of the safety and security of the minorities in SR area. This company was located in Anand Parvat, Delhi. They were air landed. On, on 31st and on 2nd, another company, Alpha Company was also air landed at Srinagar. The airfield was secured. In the meantime, the invaders were advancing towards the airfield with a view to threatening it and capturing and thereby an annexing the valley. So, what Major Sharma did really was to prevent the invaders from taking over the airfield. Absolutely. Would that be a fair reduction? Yes. On uh, Major, uh, Brigadier L.P. Sen apprehended Having got the information, he wanted to save the airfield under all so circumstances. So that's how it was done. There <coughs> but I'll request you to pause here and come back to you as a Komauni. I'm sure you have a lot to tell us. General Cardozo, maybe you can perhaps pick up the thread from there. And Major Sharma's personal contribution that enabled him to be conferred with the PVC. Could you describe that to our viewers? Yeah, I'd just like to add to what General Yadav has said. And that is, Pakistan attacked JNK from four different directions on the 20th of October. As he said, Baramala was looted, raped and raised to the ground. 
But what saved India in addition to Major Sharma's effort was the fact that the Northwest Frontier Province tribesmen, after looting and collecting a large number of women, went back to their homes to deposit the money and the loot and their women. And that gave India seven days a week by which it could fly its troops in. The troops were flown in from Saptajang Airport, as was mentioned by General Yadav, the sequence has been given. And at that time, Major Sharma had his left hand in plaster due to an accident in the gymnasium. He was being left behind. He told his commanding officer, I must go. And the reason I must go is firstly, these men are mine. I have trained them. How can they go into battle without me? And it is only my left hand and therefore I must go. So that is the story. He was put in charge of Alpha and Delta companies which went to the village of Badgam and deployed over there on the 3rd of November. On that day, the village was peaceful. There was no evidence of any collection of the forces which came from Pakistan. However, there was a collection of people in civil clothes outside the village. Later on, it transpired that there were 500 of them and 500 of them attack these. Now, in the meantime, since there was no evidence of any attack brewing, the Brigadier Sen told Somnath Sharma, you can now withdraw. So, Alpha Company came back at 1400 hours, that's 2 o'clock. At 2.30, the tribals attacked, 500 of them. So, and that is when General Sharma was able to really, I think, personally take charge and prevent them from coming. And in the process, he lost his life. Would that yeah. be the reduction? Yes. Santosh, can I come to you on this? You know, as a citizen, you know, who knows about the Indian Army and the Paramvir Chakra as an award, what is your own, shall we say, you know, recall either of Major Sharma when you were in school, growing up, or for that matter, about the Paramvir Chakra as an award, apart from what we see on the Republic Day? And 26. You know, mm -hmm. I just want you to come mm -hmm. in on this. Yeah, I think like like many people like me, I think uh, one has uh, uh, sort of a hazy. Uh, it's a very lofty idea of of the, the gallantry awards and and of the contribution of the army. But it's a it's an abstraction. So I mean, specifically, if you were to look at you know in school, what were the the kind of stories that that were related, or what kind of space was given to to you know uh, the people who won the Paramvir Chakra. I would say it would be extremely limited. It would be, you know, negligible. And, and therefore, I think this paradox that you yeah, alluded yeah. to in the, in, 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 you know, at the outset, I think is so true that at one level, you know, there is so much talk and there is respect and bordering on awe uh, when you talk about the gallantry of the armed forces. Yet there is very little concrete knowledge. Uh, if anything, I would say that it's a kind of a distant user's kind of a view of the army. The fact that, you know, will we'll, we'll, in general terms be laudatory but specifically we will not show much interest we will not either in terms of knowledge or in terms of actually uh, taking steps uh, about ensuring that that the armed forces gets its due so i think this paradox that you spoke of i think is personally also if i was to uh, you know relate i would say both are true that you thought very admiringly of the army but there was very little knowledge at the same time you know, I'm going to come back to you later in the show on this about whether this is a characteristic that is specific only to India or to democracies in general. But I'll, as I said, return to that. General Yadav, if I could come back to you, maybe you could help us now to sort of place this in context. You explained the operation. What did this mean for the Kumau Regiment that India's first Paramvir Chakra, we have a Gorkha sitting next to you, each of you are individually, you know, I would say gallant in your own ways in terms of the professional pedigree. But for the Kumau in particular, you know, the fact that the first PVC was your regiment, did it place a greater, shall we say, benchmark for you as an infantry battalion? Uh, you see, the, for a soldier and leaders and officers, the history and tradition, the Naam Namak Nishan carries immense value. And it is vividly epitomized in case of Fort Kumau that in the first independent India operations, it excelled, it set an egg a very rare example of chivalry, courage and leadership in Major Swamna Sharma and Delta Company, which was followed up in subsequent operations in JNK when the 
marauders were thrown back at baramulla area udi area forkmao participated till the end and earned immense awards one mahavir chakra ceo got mahavir chakra and about seven odd uh, vrcs and it said this particular operations gave them a bedrock for future glory it motivated the men to further excel only that our leader has been so courageous and exemplified the name of the indian army not only that in 65 also the battalion carrying the legacy of an excellent uh, operation and uh, sacrifice did exceedingly well to the extent that till 1980 forkmao was the most decorated battalion in terms of awards and even till today it is one of the most decorated battalions in well i hope four command and all commandees are watching this you've been a colonel of the regiment but let me turn to you yen sir you've written about the baramveer chakra and if memory serves me right india has conferred 21 baramveer chakras since 1947 can you briefly explain this anomaly meaning that the operation took place in november 1947 india had not become a republic and we did not have the pvc so how was the you know sort of award conferred in a kind of post facto manner if i may say so in 1947 india did not have its own gallantry awards so the prime minister pandit nehru approached britain to say can we give the victoria cross and the other series to indian soldiers who have fought gallantry in the kashmir operation the reply from the king came back to say pakistan and india are both parts of the commonwealth and how can we give an award to them for fighting against each other so please have your own awards so it took some time for them to make these awards and these awards were instituted in 1950 when india became a republic so the awards were backdated and major somnath sharma was the first to get this award but there were other pvc winners in 47 right there were the largest Three. number of awards went in the 47 operations five five awards. five pvcs five pvcs the interesting part which nobody knows is that at that time the adjutant general general atal had asked major general khanolkar his wife mrs khanolkar to design the medal she was uh, he met her as a young captain he was in Uh, in Sanders, he came for a holiday to Switzerland and met a girl called Ivan, Eva, Ivan Mados. Her mother was a Russian, her father was a Hungarian. They fell in love. She came to India, converted to Hinduism, did deep knowledge of Sanskrit, Bharat Natyam, etc. A great painter. So, Mrs. Khanolkar. was asked to design the paramveer chakra little did she realize that one day her son in law's brother would one day be the first awardee of the paramveer chakra this is general tindi sharma right tindi sharma's yeah, wife yeah, is wife. the daughter of yeah yeah perhaps i should just add on this note to say that major somnath sharma who was awarded the first pvc his younger brother general tej sharma vn sharma became the chief in 1988 so you have a very illustrious family because their father if i remember right was the first dg of the armed forces right. medical services at that time he is the only dg to serve both oh. in the east and, and western the, fronts in world war 2 so there you are i mean the sharma family i think has a pedigree that is very very distinctive mr desai if i can bring you back on this you know what you were noting earlier about india and the soldier would you characterize this as a specific indian trait or is this something about democracies in general that you remember the soldier in crisis and most of the time you know you forget about him and i don't know about this part where the institutional kind of ostracism and degradation that we are seeing as far as the indian forge is concerned how, how would you yeah. describe that as a social scientist if i may well not necessarily in fact you know you will see you know enough instances where where you know the democracy being a democracy there is an institutionalized method you know both in terms of creating memory as well as creating appreciation and 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 creating structures and processes and institutions uh, you know behind that it is true that democracies do try and and maintain a certain balance and 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 therefore the 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 executive and the army uh, how it kind of relates to each other is something that 
that the idea of balance is important. But if you look at the US, for instance, if you were to look at the, the amount of, of state kind of attention that is given to you know, gallantry, to the idea of even an individual loss of life, and the way that it is remembered and honored, uh, you would see that there is a there is a marked difference. There has been a marked difference between the the Indian response uh, to the armed forces and what you see even in other democracies. So, uh, in a general sense, that might be true. But specifically, I think uh, it, the Indian case still stands out as being one as that being, is positive and no, as no. the one that actually chooses to ignore chooses uh, to ignore. Yeah, the that's the general forces. perception in India because I think over the last few years, largely because of technology audiovisual medium, people are more aware. And I think this is a point that's been often made, that the Indian military is not treated with the kind of respect or izzat by society at large, as is the case elsewhere. But let me turn to you, Ian, sir. You wanted to say something on this about the yeah. how the Indian soldiers perceived? I just wanted to add, uh, with regard to what Santosh has said, 70 years have passed, and we still do not have a national war memorial. Now, what could be the reason for this? 70 years and now they tell us that you will get it within five years i would like to know when did the date the five years start and when will it finish can we be given a date well you're on Rajya Sabha television so i think you can raise this question very clearly to the members of the august body in parliament because i think this is an issue that's been raised many times as to why india still does not have a war memorial and why is the government of the day dragging its feet. But if I could just you know, extend this point to you, General Yadav, we talk about the welfare of the soldier and I'm going to come to the disabled issue to you, General Cardozo, since you are a gallantry award winner, you lost your leg in the 71 war, that famous story of the Kokri and how you severed your own leg. If time permits, I'll come to that. But you have been an infantry man, General Yadav, you commanded the college in Mao and so on. The welfare of the Indian soldier, in a constructive way, what is it that the government should be doing? What is it that society should be doing? Maybe I'll give that to Santosh also. But you know, briefly, if you could perhaps tell us what more could be done. I'll make uh, one sentence from where Santosh left it. The God and soldier are remember, remembered only in the times of crisis. Second part on the same issue is that as an individual, every Indian has great admiration and adulations for a soldier. But I will not say the same thing for the organization. And I leave it at that, mm. being the controversy part. We'll come back to that subject in the show at some point about the civil-military relationship, but that's perhaps for a later date. But go on. Yeah. And you want to, Ian, sir, you want to say something on the disabled? I'm sorry, I'm yeah. interrupting you, but... With regard to disability, the government, unfortunately, has been very unfair to the disabled soldier. It is not about money. But it is based on types of equation and perception that the, civil, the civilian bureaucrat has and the way he treats the disabled in the armed forces. You mean president of the Disabled Association of India, right? Or am I getting it wrong? No, no. I am the vice president of, of a Bob Wounded Foundation. Okay. So the issue is it's a simple thing, which I'd like the audience to look at and understand. A civilian bureaucrat sitting in Shillong gets a hardship allowance for sitting over there of 56,000 rupees. Whereas a soldier in Siachen, living in snow and ice, gets 26,000. Where is the equation? Secondly, as far as disability is concerned, they have now decided that because, so they say, a few officers or whatever, have misrepresented their cases, we will reduce the disability allowance to one third of what is being given today. Does that make sense? If somebody has broken the law, you take action against him. But don't punish the disabled soldier for what he has done for the country. Well, all I would say is that I think in recent months, Prime Minister Modi and the Defence Minister, Mr. Parikar, have been apprised about many of these inadequacies and anomalies and I gather that they are looking into it, you know, as shall we say, that's with the, the urgency. That's that not the first time that the... I know, but I think more recently of because price. of a series of developments including this tragic suicide, I think that's come. Santosh, very quickly if I can ask you, what more can society do to redress some of the inadequacies that 
we have all identified in different ways. No, I think just engage uh, in a more real sense. I, I think right now, you know, because it's actually very, it's a self-serving relationship with the army and, and society needs to go beyond that, beyond the fact that in a way when you're glorifying the army, actually you're glorifying uh, an image of yourself. You're not really glorifying the army. Your interest currently is not really in the conditions of the armed forces. It, so unless that interest becomes real and it do, is not as self-serving as it is today, the army's idea of the army gets used. And I think that's the problem. Society needs to go beyond. It's knowledge, it's engagement, it's the fact that you know we need to know, I think, much more than what uh, so we currently do. So would it be do. fair to suggest in the interest of, I would say, making specific policy suggestions, that perhaps the Indian school curriculum, textbooks at different levels, should maybe introduce a story about the Somnath Sharmas, the kind of you know effort that you have made, General Cardozo, but more than that, as you said, maybe we need some kind of an institutional relationship as far as the state and the soldier are concerned. But today, you know, as we look back at the story of Major Somnath Sharma, India's first Paramvir Chakra Award winner, there are many aspects, both about gallantry and about the manner in which both state and society relate to the institution, the military as an institution and the way in which perhaps the welfare of the Indian soldier could be improved upon. You want to say something on this here? Yes. What I want to say is that my first book on the Parambi Chakra has gone into nine editions. Let's say there are 2,000 copies for each edition, for 18,000. For a country of 1.25 billion each story has a message for the motivation of children and young adults. How can this story reach these people is my question. Quick answer is it should be translated into various Indian languages. But you go ahead, General Yadav, you want to say something? You see, it needs to be understood by the society. There is a canard being spread and thought that we are fishing for money. The, the truth is that a soldier is looking for Ijat. If you can uphold his dignity, if you can give him the due place in the society, that is all he wants. So that his equation, his, his Ijat is maintained as it was there pre-73. As a matter of fact, 73 onwards, he has been gradually eroded and subjugated as far as his equation with the society, with the uh, uh, official dome is concerned. Last remarks from you, Mr. Desai. You know, the two generals have given their thoughts. Anything that you want to add about this whole question of the military and the country? No, I think just to underline the fact that, you know, you know, talking in abstract terms about the military and, and saying, you know, laudatory things is not the same as having real respect, as ensuring real respect. And I think that difference needs to be understood and perhaps focused on a much, much more than it has been in the past. On that note, even as we recall India's first Paramvir Chakra, who had saved Kashmir, as we had said earlier in the course of the program, there is a larger issue, which is how do democracies and India in particular relate to this whole question of the military as an institution, the soldier as an individual, and going beyond the Paramvir Chakra and all that it represents as far as India is concerned, we have said that this is conferred on the soldiers and very often it is a posthumous award, meaning that it is awarded to the soldier after he has been martyred. India's 21 Paramvir Chakra winners beginning chronologically with Major Somnath Sharma ought to be part of the collective memory along with other great Indians whose contribution is recalled with admiration and affection. There is a lot that could be done for the families of those who have been killed in combat and the war widow is particularly vulnerable. The welfare of such families and the war disabled needs empathetic attention by state and society in a sustained manner and not in the episodic cycles that we have witnessed in recent years. Concurrently, the status of the military as an institution and the profession of arms needs to be reviewed and redressed in a holistic manner. Certain recent developments and perceptions about the Indian military in relation to the larger Indian ecosystem merit objective introspection. The gallantry of the soldier must not be forgotten, 
but neither is this an advocacy for defying the military the golden mean is the preferred path where duty towards nation and flag remains sacred on that note allow me to thank my guests general yadav general cardozo and mr desai and thank you for watching security scan goodbye